This Use a Play is brought to you by Whoa, I'm happy Now I'm gonna take my time I'm happy Enjoying myself with lime I'm happy Escape from reality Yay And let lime take care of me Whoa, whoa, we're just happy and smiling Doing almost anything Having fun and just living Whoa, whoa, shopping, chilling, everything Get happy with Barbados's largest and fastest 4G network Activate any Lime prepaid or postpaid mobile plan today This is the Barbados Today Morning News Update for Tuesday, October the 14th, 2014. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. A pleasant good morning to you. Residents of Martindale's Road in St. Michael are now living in fear. They are also angry and demanding answers from the Ministry of Health over its decision to place an isolation unit a stone's throw away from their community that's going to be used to treat Ebola and other infectious diseases. Some even appear to be unaware that the unit was being set up on the grounds of the former Enmore Health Centre and are worried for themselves, their families and students of the nearby Ursuline Convent School. No, no, they should never be there. It should be re relocated somewhere on an isolated place, you know. It's contagious and I felt that if they wanted somewhere, they should have used like the old hospital, you know, St. John's, somewhere that isn't... They don't have a lot of residents. I'm totally against it being right here. It's next to two schools. Residents are closed. There are also some outpatient clinics that people frequently go to. And if there's actual infection, the thing is going to wipe out so many people so quickly. Uh, I really think it's a great idea. I'm so scared. I don't want thing. I don't want thing. I work for people that just go overseas. Mm -hmm. I'll come back. So if they bring it in now, what are you going to do about it? I don't need it here. You have to get it contained before you get here. Yeah, but otherwise, if you get here, it'll be a problem. People can die if it comes. Some can survive. But that's the age, same thing, you know. Cancer, you, you know, all can They bring it that out. But some can make it, some can. Meantime, the four-room isolation unit is almost complete and is expected to be handed over to the ministry by tomorrow. Meantime, Barbados' ports of entry have gone into a special readiness mode to tackle any possibly imported Ebola cases. Corporate communications specialist with the Grantley Adams International Airport, Inc., Keith Goddard, tells Barbados today that just as the airport had put signs in place for chikungunya, similar measures will be taken for Ebola. We have discussed with the public health officers um, you know, having similar signage in the airport. Uh, primarily in the arrivals um, for persons who may think that they have the symptoms of Ebola. Um, that has discussion has been started and I'm sure we'll soon see a uh, signage to that effect within the arrivals terminal. Meanwhile, a medical doctor has been posted at the Bridgetown port, especially to oversee an intensified surveillance system and protocol process. Barbados Today understands that Chief Medical Officer Dr. Joyce St. John will be meeting with stakeholders today to review the protocols. The World Health Organization says just over 4,000 people have so far died from Ebola in five countries, including the U.S., one of this country's main tourist source markets and trading partners. In sports, Barbados' Indigenous Road Tennis game is going regional, as organizers seek to put it on a sound professional footing. Chief Executive Officer of the Professional Road Tennis Association, Dale Clark, tells Barbados today it's time players make money from the game. Clark says the association will also be relying less on sponsorship and more on raising its own revenue. We can't just sit back and rely on sponsors. We have to find ways to bring our own revenue, whether it be merchandising, partnership, partner with players where we can merchandise their items and get a percentage because you know they'd be their image rights and stuff like that there. We know we're going to be looking at paying a nominal fee to attend our events. It won't be like no proportion that like you've got to pay five to a hundred dollars or fifty dollars even to come to the events. But we're looking at getting um, some funds coming in from the events and also looking to go through the region. 
Clark says the association will be going into the local and regional primary schools to teach road tennis and will be releasing a how to play video at home and abroad. He also says that the inclusion of a Caribbean segment for next month's Massey United Insurance Clash of the Titans will now be held next year. We wanted to include a, let me see, a regional segment. And that was in the plans last year, but due to their rebranding and stuff, it didn't come up. But that's something that hopefully by next year, we have a segment for the players from the Caribbean. Because obviously, after say about a year, they won't be able to scratch with the Barbadians. So we're going to put them in a separate group where they can compete. And as the sport evolves in the other islands and the other territories, then we invite everyone to the mainstream tournament. It is regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. In regional news, Jamaica's National Security Minister says the military forces of the Caribbean and Latin American countries should now start planning to deal with public emergencies arising from the possible Ebola outbreak. Speaking after a conference of defense ministers in Peru, Bunting referred to the pronouncement by the World Health Organization that the deadly virus has now led to a crisis for international peace and security. Against that background, Bunting said the Ebola epidemic should now be treated as a threat to national security. He's urging the military forces of the Caribbean to prepare for a likely outbreak in the hemisphere. The National Security Minister says the Jamaican delegation at the conference was seeking technical information on the establishment and management of military health systems in emergency situations. On the international scene, the Attorney General of the U.S. State of Oklahoma is seeking to delay three executions, claiming more time is needed to obtain necessary drugs. Attorney General Scott Pruitt filed the notice on Friday requesting a delay until 2015 as the state trains staff on new lethal injection protocols. Earlier this month, the state unveiled a larger remodeled death chamber. It was rebuilt after an April execution went awry when executioners failed to inject the lethal drugs properly. Pruitt requested the executions of Richard Eugene Glossip, John Marion Grant and Charles Warner be rescheduled for no earlier than January 15th. And that's how we end our Barbados Today morning news update. You can join us again for the afternoon edition. But in the meantime, log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and email updates or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay in supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 on Lime TV to get the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a wonderful day. This news update is brought to you by... Yeah.
Activate any Lime prepaid or postpaid mobile plan today. 